Hello and welcome to this first tutorial for editing in Avid Media Composer. When you've opened the software, the first window you're going to be faced with is our project settings window. I'm going to click on browse. I'm going to select my hard drive where I want to save my project. Go to open. I'm going to click on new project. And just for the sake of ease, in this occasion, I'm going to call the project tutorial number one. The format, the format that I want to use is going to be in this case 2K and it was shot with a frame rate of 25p. I'm going to click on that. Now just to give you folks a little bit of a heads up, when you're in the project and the timeline of Avid, you can change the format size, but you can't change the frame rate. So do make sure you check the frame rate that you're working with on the footage before you set up your project because once it's in there it can be a bit of a challenge to get it changed. All these other elements we're going to leave for the time being because we want to dive in and get straight to work. So let's click on create. This is the interface of Avid Media Composer. If you've worked in Premiere it's not dissimilar, it's got its own quirks which of course we'll cover in this opening tutorial. The place we're going to start is up here on the top left and it's created a bin that's set up here, tutorial number one. It's labeled itself as the same name as the project I set. I'm just going to call this, uh, let's just say, rushes one, just for the sake of ease. And over here, this is what is contained within the rushes bin. At the moment, it's empty. So let's get our footage in. I'm going to do a right click. I'm going to click on input. You've got different ways of inputting. Import media was the one that used to be more commonly used. We're going to go with source browser and we've got a browsing window here. There's my hard drive. I'm going to click on it and the rushes that I'm going to be using are in this folder here. I'm going to do another double click on that. Work your way through to the folders that have the footage in that you're after. So I'm just going to click on here again and because they're MXFs they're contained in the clip and here they all are. As they're MXF files, you've got the MXF file here and the reference underneath. Obviously, we don't want to import the reference files, we just want to import the MXF files. Now, just a little sort of um, a little guide to sort of the differences between um, getting footage into Avid balanced against getting footage into Premiere, for those of you who might be a little bit more familiar with Premiere. There's two methods of getting footage in. And actually, probably the official term, just of sort of for clarity, is what's known as ingesting. You're ingesting the footage in. You've got two methods down here, link or import. And we're actually going to demonstrate both of those methods. So I've clicked, if I click on link and just select my first clip, it's uh, 1.37 gigabytes, as we can see up here. And the target bin is the one that I created, or rather the one that I relabeled, which is rushes1. You can, of course, create new bins or go to other bins on the drop-down menu. But we want to click on rushes1, and it's just a simple link. I click on link. I'm just going to close this window down. And if I look up here, this is my clip. And if I double-click on it, I can play it in this window here. I've got a play button, or I can just press the space bar. And this is what's known as linked media. This is the same as importing in Premiere Pro. Simply, if you do import in Premiere Pro, it's the same process as that. It goes straight in. And you can see there's a little sort of chain symbol there, so it's linked to the footage. The other method of ingesting is input, source browser. And this time, we're going to click on import. And down here, you've got a list of resolutions that you can work with. Now, when you click import, what it's going to do is it's going to create a proxy that is at a much lower resolution than the initial footage. So this is 2K footage, okay? But again, once you start editing with 2K footage, your computer can start to lag and overheat. So the recommended way of getting footage into Avid is to create a proxy, very much like you would in Premiere. You can create proxies in Premiere. I'm sure many of you know that. So I'm going to click on Import, and I'm going to go to my Resolution drop-down menu here. There are many to go through, and again, it can be very confusing, but for the purposes of what we're going to go for here, the ones you want to focus on are the, these DNX HD settings. And I want the edit to run nice and smoothly, so I'm going to go for DNX HD low bandwidth. Or if you want to, you can go for standard quality. Let's just go for standard quality. That will do for what our purposes are. 
So the resolution, DNX HD SQ, make sure if you're gonna create a proxy, which is essentially what we're doing, you know where that proxy is gonna be saved. And I do not want it to save on my Mac. I want it to save on my hard drive. So everything's in one place. I've got my target bin and I'm gonna click on import and off we go. As you can see, it's now creating the proxy. And if we look up here, we've now got the same file. So I'm gonna click on this one. This is the linked video. And I'm gonna click on this one, which is the imported video. And my recommendation would be, if you've got projects that are gonna be getting up to sort of five, 10, 15, 20 minutes, or particularly features that you're working on, you want to be working with imported footage rather than linked media. That there is essentially linking to that 2K footage. And by the time you get to a timeline where you've got three, four, five minutes of footage and you're trying to play it back, your computer will overheat and start to lag. Now, linked ones are useful if you're in a real hurry and you know the director wants to see some results straight away. You can use linked media, but again, once you go into 2K, 4K, 8K, and even up to 16K, your computer is really gonna suffer and probably overheat. Now, the truth is, if you are working with footage that's just 1080p, you could probably get away with just linked media. It wouldn't really overstretch or put any great strain on your computer. But this is 2K, and when you're going for 2K and over, you do need to actually import the footage, as I demonstrated earlier. So you have a nice, easy workflow, and the edit doesn't lag behind. So I'm actually going to get rid of that linked media. I'm just going to click Delete and get rid of that. And we're going to be working with just our imported footage. And as a final closing point to this tutorial, let me show you where that footage is on the hard drive. Because this is a proxy, it's not the original. So I'm going to do a right click. I'm going to go to Reveal File. And I'm now going to open my hard drive, a little bit more for you to see. Those are the original rushes. Yeah. What's now happened is, under Avid Media Files, it's created this new folder called Avid Media Files. And if you click on MXF, Media Exchange Format, and go into this folder, all of these here are the proxies. So that's the video data, and that's the audio data attached to that proxy. Under no circumstances should you move or relabel this Avid Media Files. As you start importing and generating proxies for each clip, these files will grow and grow and grow and grow. And it's very, very important you don't move this into another folder. Keep it at the main root of your hard drive. And whatever you do, do not relabel it. Don't move it. Keep it in the same place for a good, smooth workflow and no disruption to your editing. Right, we're going to leave it there um, because that's really enough, I think, for actually just sort of getting footage imported. On the next tutorial, we'll start looking at setting up the timeline and getting some basic editing done. See you on the next one.